Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will see about the part 2 of modular arithmetic. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number 1. We will understand modulus with an analogy and outcome number 2, we will understand various properties of modular arithmetic. In the last presentation, we have seen clock analogy where I explained you the concept of modulus and congruence using the clock analogy. In this presentation, I will give you one more analogy to understand the concept of modulus. Let's take a circle which is of 10 units and also let's take thread which is of 35 units length. It means the circumference of the circle is 10 units and we have 35 units of thread. You can use the units to be a centimeter or meter according to your wish. I'm simply specifying it as a unit. Now what I am going to do with this thread? Suppose I take this thread and I wrap around the circle one time. It means the circumference is 10 and we have 35 units of thread. So what I am doing? I am taking the thread and I am wrapping around the circle with the thread. Assume I have done it for one time. So I have wrapped around one time and how much thread I will be having remaining? It's 25 units. Why? Because the circumference of the circle is 10 and I have 35 units of thread and I have done only one wrap around operation. It means I have placed the thread on the circle only one time. Since the circumference is 10, so obviously I will be having 25 units of thread remaining. Here the modulus is circumference. Why? Because I can wrap around any number of times. Here I have wrapped around only one time. So after one time wrap around, how much thread is remaining? It's 25 units of thread which is remaining. So the equivalent congruence is 35 is congruent to 25 mod 10. What do you mean by this? So 35 when it is divided by 10, if the quotient is 1, then I'll be having 25 units remaining, right? This is a valid congruence because I have done the wrap around operation only one time. So from this it is clear that the circumference of the circle is acting as the modulus, right? Let's do the wrap around one more time. Now I have 25 units remaining, isn't it? What I am going to do is, I am going to wrap around this thread on the circle one more time. So when I do this for the second time, how much thread I will be having now? Previously I had 25 units, now I will have only 15 units because the circumference is 10, I have done 2 times, isn't it? So 20 units already have been wrapped around. So I will be having only 15 units left now. So the equivalent congruence is 35 is congruent to 15. This 15 is this 15, right? So 35 is congruent to 15 mod 10. Is this a valid congruence? Yes, of course, this is a valid congruence if I do the wrap around two times. In case if I do the same wrap around third time, it means I have only 15 units left with me and I am doing the wrap around operation for one more time. So obviously I'll be getting only 5 units remaining and this is the output of the third wraparound, isn't it? So if the quotient value is 3, it means when 35, when it is divided by 10 and if the quotient is 3 and I'll be left with only 5 units, right? This is this unit. All these congruent equations are perfectly valid but what is the difference? Here this 35 is same in all the cases and the modulo is also same in all the cases but why we have this difference? Because it's only up to me to decide how many times I'm going to divide, right? How many wraparounds I'm performing in the circle. Likewise, how many times I'm going to use this operation or the quotient value is decided by me. Anyway, all these three congruent equations are perfectly valid. I hope this analogy have helped you to understand things in a better way. Let's dive into the topic of the day, the properties of modular arithmetic. Actually, we have basic three properties. The first property is A mod N plus B mod N and the result of this whole mod N is simply A plus B mod N. See, here we have A mod N, here we have B mod N, right? So take A, take B and we have mod N here, we have mod N here and we have mod N as a whole, right? So this big part can be simplified as take A and B, just add A and B and perform mod N simply. Whatever the result we are getting here, we'll be getting the same result when we do this operation also. Don't worry about this now, anyway we are going to see some examples. Let's see the second property, A mod n minus B mod n whole mod n is congruent to A minus B mod n. So you have a big equation which can be simplified as simply A minus B mod n. So previously we had plus, now we had minus. Now the third equation is the product, where A mod n is multiplied by B mod n, the whole mod n is equal to 
a into b mod n which is the product of a and b mod n let's see some examples for all three categories let's focus on the first one let's take the example now it is 15 mod n where a is 15 and n is 8 right so n will be 8 throughout this example because we have fixed n to be 8 so 15 mod 8 plus 11 mod 8 the whole mod 8 which can be simply written as 15 plus 11 mod n right so 15 plus 11 mod 8 because n is equal to 8 here what is the value of 15 plus 11 it is 26 right so it is 26 mod 8 26 when it is divided by 8 8 3 times 24 and the remainder is 2 right so the remainder the answer for this example is 2 it need not be the case that we should always follow this approach i'll give you one more approach here just see it's very simple approach what is this 15 mod 8 15 mod 8 means just simplify here itself 15 mod 8 15 divided by 8 we get the remainder 7 right so here we have 7 here 11 mod 8 when we do this operation we get remainder 3 so 7 plus 3 is 10 right here we have 7 plus here we have 3 so 7 plus 3 we have mod 8 right so 7 plus 3 is what 10 mod 8 so 10 mod 8 means we get the same remainder 2 right but please ensure that you are following the basics of mathematics perfectly. If you follow the basic perfectly, any approach you follow, that doesn't matter. So this is about the first property plus. Let's see the second property, which is this. We will see the example now. 15 mod 8 minus 11 mod 8 whole mod 8 is equal to 15 minus 11 mod 8. Because we can simply write it as 15 minus 11 mod 8, right? So 15 minus 11 is 4. 4 mod 8 is simply 4. Or we can use like this, right? Here we have 7. Here we have 3. So 7 minus 3 is 4 mod 8. So 4 mod 8 is the one we got this side. So it's simply 4. And you can apply the same logic for performing the multiplication as well. So 15 mod 8 multiplied by 11 mod 8 whole mod 8 can be simply written as 15 into 11 mod 8. 15 into 11 is 165. So 165 when it is divided by 8 we get the remainder 5. Or simply 7 into 3. 7 into 3 is what? 21. 21 mod 8. 21 when it is divided by 8. 8 2 times 16 and obviously the remainder is 5. So this is the fundamental properties of modular arithmetic. As I already mentioned, you follow any approach but ensure that you are following the correct mathematical principles. Before we conclude, let's see the actual properties of modular arithmetic. Basically, the modular arithmetic has the following properties. Number 1, the commutative property. Number 2, the associative property. Number 3, the distributive property. Number 4, the existence of identity and the existence of additive inverse. Let's see one by one briefly. So, a plus b mod n. It can be written as b plus a mod n. Both are same only. Similarly, for multiplication, a into b mod n is equal to b into a mod n. So, these two are the commutative properties. Please note here, we can't expect minus to perform the same way like plus n multiplication. Because 5 minus 3 is different, 3 minus 5 is different. 5 minus 3 will give 2, whereas 3 minus 5 will give minus 2. Both are different values. So, commutative property does not hold true for minus operation. And that's why we have taken only these two arithmetic operators. What are the arithmetic operators it is holding true for commutative properties? It is plus and multiplication. And coming to the second property, which is the associative property, where a plus b plus c mod n is equal to a plus b plus c. Can you see here? This is a plus b plus c. Whereas here, a plus b plus c, right? So, in all the cases, it is plus only. Similarly, the same is true for multiplication as well. a into b into c mod n is equal to a into b into c mod n. Say, in the distributive law, a into b plus c, you see here, we have multiplication as well as we have plus. So, a into b plus c mod n can be written as a into b plus a into c. Can you see here, a into b plus a into c the whole mod n always remember you have mod n so don't forget to suffix mod n then what about the next one the identity property say when you perform 0 plus a mod n if you get the same number again it is a binary operator right it takes two inputs one is 0 and the other one is a after carrying out this binary operation and if you get the same number again that is if you perform the addition of a with 0 if you get the same number a as the result then 0 is the identity element. So normally 0 will be the identity element for addition operation and 1 will be the identity element of multiplication operation because if you add any number with 0, you will get the same number, right? 
If you multiply any number with one, you will get the same number, isn't it? So identity elements also holds true for these two operators plus and multiplication. Then what is the last property? The additive inverse. What is this? If you take a number, let's take for each a belongs to Zn. You have a set of integers and a belongs to Zn. It means out of this entire set of integers, you are taking an element a. And if there exists a minus a, please note if there exists a minus a. So in the set of integers that you have taken, if you have a minus a such that if you add this a and minus a and if you get the identity element, see what is the identity element of plus? It is zero, right? So when you take an element, when you add that element with its inverse and if you get the identity element mod n, then there exists an additive inverse. If a into a inverse gives one mod n, then there exists a multiplicative inverse because for multiplication, one is the identity element for that integer a multiplied by its inverse will be getting one mod n, right? Because that's a multiplicative inverse. So these are all the various properties of modular arithmetic. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the modulus with an analogy and we also have understood various properties of modular arithmetic. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.